Okay, so let's show um, how boron goes from its atomic orbitals to its molecular orbitals in um, the molecule, or in a molecule such as boron trifluoride, okay? So, in other words. So if we look at uh, boron, right, um, we know how to draw its molecular orbital diagram, or its atomic orbital diagram, right? its orbital diagram. So let's go ahead and do, well, let's just do it for the valence electrons, though, okay? So um, in this case, it's going to be, you guys can help me out, too, if you want. It's going to have its 2s and its 2p. And if we look at where it is, one, two, well, one, two, three, right? So, one, two, three. So, if we were thinking about it like this, and it's uh, atomic orbitals, right, we would, might think that this boron should only be able to make one bond. Is everybody okay with that? So it's got one, only one half-filled orbital. But we know from this structure that it's making three bonds. And we know that it does make three bonds from our experience in chemistry so far. So um, we know that something must be happening with these atomic orbitals in order for it to be able to bond. Is everybody OK with that? Um, so that something that we all know happens is rehybridization, right? So um, we're going to. So we're rehybridizing our boron. So this is boron. Here. Two. Well, so we want to make three bonds, and we've got three electrons. So how many orbitals do we need to do? Three. Three. Okay. So what three are we going to take? Yeah, two p's and one s. Something like that. We're going to have the one two p left. So let's go ahead and do that. So since we took one s and two p's, we're going to make sp two orbitals. So that gives us a clue as to what the bond angle should be for uh, these bonds. So we've made we put in three, so we get out three, right? Whatever you put in, you get out. And if you want to, you can put your two. Two p orbital up there, and then you're just gonna follow your filling rules. You get those three electrons there, and now of course um, the fluorines can come and make um, bonds with their uh, two p orbitals, their unfilled two p orbitals. Is that all right with everybody? So um, if we wanted to draw. You know, one of the actual, well, let's draw the boron, what it looks like um, with its orbitals. So we've got a one, so this is an sp2 orbital, and then we've got one sp2, if you can imagine, coming out like that. Okay, and then the other one, and again, this is kind of hard to see. Can you guys tell? Like that? Okay, so, <laughs> so sp2, right? sp2, sp2. So those are the orbitals, so it's um, molecular orbitals that it's made. But it's also got still that 2p orbital. And when you guys learn about organic chemistry, you know, this is um, where things will electrons will come. So this is called the Lewis acid, and we'll talk more about that, I guess, next semester. Um, but, you know, uh, things with a lot of electron density will come in and attack that, because this doesn't have any electron density, and it wouldn't mind having a full octet, if you want to think about that. Um, but anyways, the last thing we want to talk about is how the fluorine bonds to it, right? So um, we'll show it on this. We'll just do one of them, because it'll get way too messy here. But anyways, the fluorine, it didn't need to rehybridize. So, sorry, we're going off the board. But that's a big load. And that's a big load. So imagine those two loads being the same size. And uh, this being the 2p orbital. And that overlap right there, that's your um, covalent bond. Okay, so that's 
so you've got the one there and the one there. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. I think we went over enough on that one today. Any questions, I guess? I'm going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs>